Hello, shameless writers. It's time once again for my writer's vlog, and this week I've got a doozy. Apparently the young people call gossiping spilling tea, and I'm going to be spilling some tea today. Everyone has that friend where they hear about things a little late in the game. We call it tardy to the party, or at least we did in the 90s. I don't know what they call it now. Uh, but for me, I feel a little tardy to the party in terms of James Patterson. Apparently he's an author or something. I jest, of course. But you've heard me talk about how I signed up for Masterclass. Um, I didn't just sign up for one class. I signed up for the All Access Annual Pass because when I looked at the collection of writers that they had, I knew that Neil Gaiman was not the only one I wanted to hear from. I wanted to hear from all of them. Um, now that I took so long to finish Gaiman, I don't think I have enough time to get to all of them, but you know what? I'm still going to get to several of them. So right after I finished Gaiman, I thought to myself, all right, you know, I'm going to switch gears here because Gaiman is very literary. He's very British. He's just wonderful. But you can tell by the length of time that it took me to do his class that his class was really in depth. The writing experience or the exercises rather, those were no joke. Um, they really asked you to delve. And because it's Gaiman, he asked you to look at your childhood, which I don't know about you and your storied background, but... Uh, that was no fun for me, especially since the exercise was right about a particularly embarrassing or upsetting time of your childhood. You know, those things that we like to forget. <laughs> so yeah, that's how the class started. It was no joke. So I chose James Patterson for my second one on purpose, knowing that he would be a little bit lighter. I didn't know how much. So as one must do with all of these types of videos, I just want to go on record saying I do not hate James Patterson. I don't think he is a bad or a moral person. And I know from reading his past works and seeing the film adaptations of them, Hello, Kiss the Girls, oh, best ever, he's not a bad writer. On his worst day, he'll never be a bad writer. But it seems to me that he has in his dotage become a lazy one. And for me, that's almost worse. Let me tell you what I mean. If you've never taken a master class or even gone to their website, let me give you a brief overview of what it looks like. When you go to master class, you can sign up for one course at a time and pay the fee for it, or you can get the annual all access pass, which is what I chose to do. Then once you select a class, then you have access to the class videos, which is the instructor just talking to you about each of their lessons. When you log on to their page, you can see the layout of their lessons. They have the titles and a brief description. You can jump around as you see fit to the uh, lessons which most interest you. I recommend going in order regardless of which instructor you're in, but that's just me. Um, and then they also have course materials. This is a thick PDF. At least it's been in the case of Gaiman, and now I'm taking David Baldacci's course on uh, thrillers and mysteries. I'm really enjoying it so far. I've only gotten uh, two of his classes down so far, really having a positive experience. But here's the thing about those course materials. And this is for Gaiman and Baldacci, both of them very different authors. They have a very different voice in how they write. Uh, they carry themselves very differently, uh, different types of guys. But they take themselves seriously, and you can tell even before I turned on the course. And now David Baldacci, I've never read any of his stuff. I want to emphasize that, so I don't have any particular loyalty to him. But when I looked at the course material, they were both really meaty. Each of them were more than 90 pages, but less than 100. Uh, all of the pages were filled with text. I could see that there was an assortment of just kind of exposition and going into detail. And it was all different text than what you were seeing on your screen from the author himself. So it wasn't just a transcription of what you were listening to. It was different stuff. Then there were the writing exercises. And for Baldacci, he separates them into, okay, well, here's an exercise you can do just regardless of what's going on with and what your goals are. And here's a specific exercise that you can apply to your work in progress. Um, Gaiman did some where, you know, they were just regular, nothing to do with any particular work, and then some that were uh, directly about your work in progress, and he alternated depending on what the lesson was. So when I signed up for Patterson, the first thing I did was I opened up the P 
PDF. Uh, what I do is I print off my course materials. Let me let me show you real quick. I'm not going to flip the camera around because that's lame. Um, so I have my awesome little three inch binder. Um, I got this at Home Depot. No, not Home Depot. That's stupid. Um, Office Depot. There we go. And I'm not going to show you any of the course material because I don't want to get copyrighted striked. Um, so, you know, I'll just put their stuff in here. And then as you can see from how thick these are, all right, this is just two. That's Gaiman and Baldacci. So it's no joke. And you write directly in it. You have space. Um, well, actually, no. With Gaiman and Baldacci, you, you didn't have any space. <laughs> Uh, you had to use your own paper or your own notebook. And both authors at the beginning of their class recommended, I recommend you have a notebook for this course. They both recommended that because, you know, the course packet is their own material. Patterson, uh, I didn't even count at first, but in just flipping through the PDF, I was like, wow, there's a lot of um, blank pages here. Now, he called them notes pages, but they're blank. They are material without putting in material. It, it's a cheat. Uh, for those of you who watch Family Guy, there was an episode where Brian was just, Brian is the dog, by the way, who's self-important and just kind of a liberal caricature. He's really funny. Uh, he got tired of being rejected as an author. He had written a preposterous book called Faster Than the Speed of Love, which he fancied as being literary, which of course it wasn't. I think in one episode they said it was basically a word-for-word -word reprint of Iron Eagle or whatever. Um, but he was tired of the rejection, and he was so sick to death of looking at the bestseller list and seeing self-help nonsense on it. So he said, you know what? I'm, I'm done with this. I'm just going to write some stupid self-help book. And part of that was there were like 50 blank pages in it. You know, oh, write your dreams on the next page. And of course, you know, we, we've all seen those authors who do that, and we hate them, and then we also hate ourselves for filling out those blank pages. Huh. We die a little inside, don't we? So I saw those blank pages, but I was like, you know what? That, that's just manners. Um, he's just giving us some notes pages. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so here's the thing. Like I said, Baldacci and Gaiman, both 90 to 95 pages. Patterson was 66. Of those 66, get my handy dandy sheet out here, uh, 28 of those pages were blank, designed for you, the paying customer, to fill out with your observations of his sage words. Uh, a further 10, 13 pages were sample material for the exercises, but wait, there's more. That sample material was written by his students. He couldn't even be bothered to write the pages and pages of samples that he gave you for his nonsensical writing exercises. He had his students do it. Um, yeah, some of these sage writing exercises were uh, set a timer for 30 minutes and write the events of your day and list the details you noticed. Does that sound like a writing exercise for an adult to you? Because it doesn't to me. I will say that at least for the sample material for the exercise, he gave credit to his students. And as I understand it, that's kind of been a problem in the past. I didn't do a whole lot of research on it, but I spoke to an offer friend of mine. And I guess there's been some controversy in the past where Patterson was co-writing books with his students. And... Um, when the book came out, well, he just plum forgot to say that he co-wrote that book and only his name was on the cover. Um, I, I don't know if, if those co-writers were paid. I feel like it was not. I feel like they were just being paid in exposure, but don't, don't quote me on that. Um, I didn't bother to do the research because this is a vlog and not a serious video and I don't care enough about James Patterson to, to look at all that. Anyway, um, Technically speaking, maybe I shouldn't have been so angry at the complete lack of work that went into this course, clearly the lack of thought, and the lack of consideration for the people who were paying money to see this. Now, for me, I did the annual pass. So sitting through Patterson's class, hoping against hope that with each sequential lesson, 
there would be something buried in there that would be worth my time. There was not. What irritates me is what about the people who can't afford to get the annual pass? They can only afford to buy one class, one. And they choose James Patterson because, hey, he's the guy who sells all the books in the airport. They want to be famous. They want to be that broad appeal author. You know, Guyman is wonderful, but let's be honest, you know, not, not everybody reads Guyman. Even the people who say, oh, yes, I love Neil Guyman. He is my most favoritist author. But he's not. Is he? Because if you look at their Kindle, there's no Guyman in there. There's E.L. James and James Patterson. But that's what's most infuriating. James Patterson doesn't write trash, or at least he didn't used to back when I read him. The Alex Cross series is actually really good. Don't, don't be put off by that weird screenplay-only version they did with Tyler Perry, which apparently is the worst movie that's ever existed. I didn't see it, but that's what I heard. Don't be put off by it. He wrote really great mysteries and thrillers. Awesome. And, and this is not a small thing, there were not a lot of black protagonists available back in the day, okay? Or if there were, they were not exceptionally intelligent criminal profilers. So as a fan of black excellence in media, we can all tip our hat to James Patterson, perhaps the only man in the world who was whiter than me. And I don't know how much Masterclass paid him to sit down and do the class. I can't imagine it was cheap, though, because even if you don't like his writing, he's still a name. And he's a prolific writer, even though the majority of his writing of late is done by someone else. It's still his name that sells that writing. All of that, as long as it's properly attributed, I genuinely don't have a problem with it. I don't know if it's true, but I heard somewhere that R.L. Stein didn't actually write all of his stuff, and that's why he was able to be prolific. I'll have to double check on that, but it wouldn't surprise me, because I mean... <sighs> I read so many R.L. Stein books, and there were always more. I still haven't read all of them, and I read him almost exclusively for my entire junior high career until I discovered Richie Tankersley Cussick, and then, <laughs> then it was over for R.L. Stein. But if you're going to charge the common man, your fans, money, to the material you put out had better be worth their money. The James Patterson course had absolutely nothing of value in it. I will say that again. The James Patterson course had nothing of value in it. You can find better writing advice on YouTube for free. And I'm not talking about my channel. I'm talking about authors like Sarah Cannon and Jenna Marisi. These are authors who sell six figures worth of books. People love their books. They also give paid classes. But here's the thing. They also give free content which is how I learned who they were. I learned about them on YouTube. And then when I heard what they had to say, I'm like, wow, they have really good free content. Imagine how good their paid content is. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's the way the information economy works. So if you're giving paid content and it's worse than what you can get for free on YouTube, one, you should be ashamed. And two, no, that's it. You should be ashamed. So if you're going to purchase a masterclass, and I recommend that you do, by the way, they have so many different types of artists. They've got Itzhak Perlman on there. They've got Judy Bloom. They've got David Mamet. They've got Natalie Portman, who I love. Samuel L. Jackson. Whether you're in film, photography, any kind of the arts, apparently they have cooking people on there now. I, I'm a microwave aficionado, so I don't, I don't care about that. These are expert craftsmen. And logic dictates any one of them should be worth your money. If you can only afford one, then you should only buy one and be content that your money is being well spent. But that's not what happened here. Not even a little. So if you're interested in getting a masterclass, let it not be James Patterson's. I can safely vouch for Neil Gaiman, and though I'm not done with it, I feel very confident in safely vouching for David Baldacci as well. His course materials look solid. It's 90 plus pages of solid content. No blank pages there. And he has a very relaxed speaking style. For those of you who are not from the US, you know that Americans have a very particular way of speaking. No matter what we're saying, even if we're talking about the fate of the universe, somehow we always sound so casual about it. 
whereas our British counterparts, whatever they're saying, even if it's a recipe for their mother's meat pie, somehow they sound as if they're discussing the fate of the world and very refined while they do it. I am happy to say that the investment of knowledge I put in myself in getting Masterclass has helped my writing. Last week I did mention that I was having a really hard time with writer's output. And I also speculated that, well, maybe it's the antidepressants, but maybe it's not. It was the antidepressants. Um, I weaned myself off starting on July 1st under the care of my doctor. I want to specify that if you are trying or if you're thinking of not being on antidepressants anymore, regardless of which type, speak with your doctor and don't make any changes until they tell you. I cannot emphasize that enough. So under the care of my doctor, I weaned off my antidepressants. I did have some withdrawals, including brain shivers, which I had never heard of before and hope to never experience again because wow, those are uncomfortable and uh, wow, it's just hard to do really anything while they're happening. It's not like a seizure. It might sound like a seizure. It's not. It's just this very odd zapping feeling for me at the base of my skull. And it was just really odd. Um, the good news is I was advised to start exercising, which would help. And it did. So I got a twofer there. One, I worked my hamstrings and glutes. Go me. And also it made the brain shivers go away a little quicker. I don't have to take naps every day anymore. And just like magic, I can write again. So I've only got... 5,000 words that are going into Black Magic's Vendetta. Not very many, but they're the right words. I have about 8,000 words tucked off to the side that I wrote trying to do sprints, just spinning myself in circles, trying to get this book off the ground. And so, you know, I wrote those words, but they're not going to go in the book and they're not going to go anywhere because they're just very dry and flat and soulless. And I would never publish them in, under any circumstances. So writing is, for the first time since I started writing this book, going well, and I'm really excited. So I've got my critique meeting with Rachel Ellen tonight. I'm so excited about that. And then I'm even more excited that I have a speech booked in August, which is going to basically, not it's not a pep talk, but it's basically advice on how to find the courage within you to write your own story. Because like I said in my last vlog, the number one most common book that people want to write for their first book is either a memoir or something that's loosely based on what happened in their life and then they want to put that into fiction and you feel very exposed when you do that and then you start hedging your bets and then you change the characters in such a way not because it makes the story better but because you want to make yourself look more sympathetic or basically you just want to rewrite history so people will like you and I'm, I'm not saying that to be critical but everyone has an innate human need to be liked, to be accepted by the group. I mean, that's what kept us alive during caveman days. So no judgment here. But like Anne Lamott said, if you're going to write something, make it true. So I'm really excited about that. Nor It's going to be a small talk. It's not going to be like a Gary Vee event or whatever. There's probably going to be like 10 people there, which is a good audience size for me because, you know, this is new. But I am excited about it. I haven't really done public speaking since I was on the debate team in high school. And I was really good at debate, but you know, I mean, it's debate. And uh, it's kind of a different thing than giving a public talk. So that's my vlog for this week. Um, I have included a link down below for Masterclass. Again, I definitely recommend it, just not for James Patterson. So until this weekend for my awesome editing content, take care and write well. Yeah.